I know who the Boko Haram are. And remember the words he used. He said he knows. He knows the them. He knows where they are. They can bring about an end to the suffering of the people of northern Nigeria in Madiguri area and the Boko Haram will be history. Hundred days. We are now six years past. We are six years past. Buhari still wears his gabs and walks around the African Union telling us that he's worth a leader. What type of leader is this? Who cannot solve? If the problem of Boko Haram is too much for Mr. Buhari, why hasn't Mr. Buhari told, bring, brought this problem to African Union or to the United Nations Security Council? Mr. Buhari was given advice and the African Union and Americans and other agencies, European Union, wanted to intervene in the problem of Boko Haram, just as we did on Amisom in Somalia. Mr. Buhari told us to show that Buhari has a hand in Boko Haram because he uses them. He uses them. Now, this is a crying African. I don't mind what you want to do or what you do. This is a crying African. And I'm crying for this Africa. You might be using Boko Haram to kill Nigerians. Because surely what type of president is this? Who cannot bring a solution to the African Union Peace and the Security Council to discuss the issue of Boko Haram? Americans wanted to come in to give him more arms. He did not want. The Boko Haram syndrome has expanded in Niger, Mauritania, Cameroon, Chad, and all the neighboring countries. It is spreading. The nucleus is from Madiguri in Nigeria. Mr. Buhari always goes out. They get the money from the oil, pump it out, bank it in the city banks. His wife has got an account of $2.5 billion. $2.5 billion. If you can look at that, that is not what we are after. Mm -hmm. We are after a very serious operation that this country must get rid of Boko Haram, mm -hmm. the killings, whether you are killing a Flani, whether you are killing a, 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 an Aibo, these are Nigerians who are dying. We would like to call upon the government of Nigeria and the international community now to come in forcefully to help us to get rid of or bring up a mechanism or afterwards to bring a mechanism on how to fight Boko Haram, which has defeated Mr. Buhari from fighting. And also, yes, uh, uh, former President Obasanjo also mentioned that in his letter and he says Boko Haram has menacingly ravaged the land and in spite of government's claim of victory over Boko Haram, the potency and the activities of Boko Haram where they are active remain undiminished, putting light to government's claim. So he's telling Mr. Buhari, you've been lying about fighting Boko Haram because if anything, Boko Haram has thrived under your leadership. It is. Because he uses them to kill the Igbos. It's a, it's a straightforward answer. You know Africa needs Nkrumahs. Africa needs Sakuture. Africa needs Amir Kabra. Africa needs Nasa. Haiselasi. Obote. Nyerere. Nyerere would not accept this. Remember the, the war in 1967 in Biafra. When it broke up. Nyerere decided... Nyerere, Obote, Kaunda, and the rest of some African leaders recognized Biafra because they saw a lot of hypocrisy of General Yakub Gowan. I was a young man, not very young. My father took me to a conference where in 1967 where I watched delegates in Kampala. Most of you don't know why I am attached to Nigeria. Because the conference that silenced the war in Biafra came was done in my country called Uganda in Kampala. One delegate from Biafra got lost up to date. That delegate, I don't know how the report went, but I was young. I listened to the reports 
that were coming out. The situation in Nigeria demands an international intervention. An international intervention in the sense that one, time has come for the people of Africa and the international community to ask questions. Who supports Boko Haram? Who supplies Boko Haram? We might be having some external forces namely connected with other countries that are, we see doing the same on Libya north of, of Nigeria. It is very important, therefore, for us as Africans to sit back and review the situation in Nigeria. Therefore, Buhari has, is defeated. He can't run Nigeria. He's running pieces of pieces of pieces of no pieces of Nigeria. The country is falling to, to wrong elements. People are slaughtering each other. The Flanis are killing the Igbos. They are trying to displace them forcefully out of the areas. The policies are not going very well. We have to speak up. Somebody has to speak up. And I am speaking up. Yes. Dear friends, I really appreciate in your voice uh, tonight. And one of them here, uh, Ejikeme Ibe, you're saying uh, Boko Haram is a plot to siphon money away through an inflated defense budget. So that could be the reason why uh, President Muhammad Buhari is not really interested in fighting Boko Haram. Because as much as they keep on and they, they look, they're posing a threat to the country, he has more reason uh, to allocate money uh, for defense of the country that later on gets siphoned and he gets uh, through corruption. Of course, as this happens, is drilling the oil is taking the oil out of nigeria to sell but the people where he's taking the oil is poor the poor the conditions people live on water i have never seen in kenya and the uganda people living on water on houses built on water surely huts built on water this is nigeria where oil is being drilled on a daily basis sold to merchants, mercantile of merchants, France, Total Oil, which is one of my obstacles in Africa. That's why I refuse to watch AFCOM. I refuse to watch AFCOM because of Total Oil. How in Africa, in two, 2019, how on earth can we be sponsored by a foreign company called Total Oil sponsoring our football. Are we crazy Africans? We are very useless Africans. We are very useless. Total Oil behind Buhari. The French behind Buhari. Push on. Kill them. Threaten them. Slaughter them. If I show you the pictures, why I'm so upset is the amount of pictures live pictures coming by phone from Enugu, Onita, Kano, Ibadan, all these areas, Port Harcourt, Lagos, all these areas, people are being slaughtered, people are being killed, people are being tortured, people are being taken out of their houses and cut in front of their wives. Younger men might not see light in Nigeria. They might not. They might not. The general youth population of Nigeria is going down because of the slaughter. We have to cry together as Africans. Wherever you are in South Africa, North Africa, West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, cry together. Let's liberate Nigeria. Mr. Buhari is defeated. Nigeria. Just uh, another line here that I found very interesting in uh, President Tubasio's letter towards uh, President Buhari. He said, 
and just uh, and, and accepting that he's saying the unfortunate situation is that the criminality is being perceived as a Fulani menace unleashed by Fulani elite in the different parts of the country for a number of reasons but even more unfortunately many Nigerians and non-Nigerians who are friends of Nigeria attach uh, the vicious responsibility to you as a Fulani elite and the current captain of the Nigerian ship so the fact that this has been perceived as an attack by the Fulani to, to the rest of Nigerians and uh, or, or messages letter seems to suggest that even these uh, claims being very open uh, President uh, Muhammadu Buhari does not really care the fact that he is a Fulani and these things are being directed towards Fulani who are seen to be you know causing mayhem across Nigeria but he, he's been very reluctant to even come out and call out and g even give a stand on this so he's been very complacent in accepting that actually Fulani's are the ones who are meeting other Nigerians uh, you know with this uh, level of uh, you know uh, harm one of the before i answer that one of the our viewers right from enugu is saying no light no water no medical nothing zero this is a country that produces oil it protects it oil it has a population that consumes they sleep hungry they have nowhere to go uh, statistics it shows that Nigeria being all with all that oil and all that money and one of the leading you know, economies in Africa actually it has the population of the most abject poverty stricken people in the world that statistics still shocks me not just in Africa but in the world even us we don't even have that oil but you're better off than Nigeria how does that even make sense it, 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 because the man produces it to give to his wife to bank the United States of America released a list, which I have, and I'll read it at the end of how many people in on that list are from Nigeria. Very many. Where do they bank? Where does the Gote bank his money? He doesn't bank it in Nigeria. He banks in the city bank. Does he help Africa? No. We have a problem, and that mentality in men among Africans must change. We have a very huge problem that is killing Africa as we speak today. Therefore, the situation in Nigeria, the human rights, the army killing civilians, torturing and slaughtering, shooting, carrying civilians on trucks, dead bodies, cut in different ways. I can't, oh my God, I cannot explain here. I cannot show these pro photographs. I am not going to keep quiet. I am not a Nigerian. I feel for the deep people, the Biafran people, the people being killed from both sides of the conflict that has been instigated, supplied, manufactured, and equipped by General Buhari himself. And just uh, as, we, as we wind up on this letter by uh, the president, he said at was the end that um, to be explicit and without a, a equivocation, Mr. President and General, I'm deeply worried about four avoidable uh, calamities. So let's just look at the four points that uh, Obasa Joe has addressed to, you know, President Buhari. Uh, sorry for that. And the first one he says he has abandoning Nigeria into the hands of criminals. So he says uh, President Buhari has abandoned Nigerians into the hand of hands of criminals. The second point. A spontaneous and planned repressal attacks against Fulanis, which may inadvertently or advertently mushroom into a program of Rwanda type genocide. So that is where he's worried that uh, Nigeria is actually sinking into genocide slowly. And the third point is similar attacks against any other tribe or ethnic group anywhere in the country initiated by rumors, fears, intimidation, and revenge capable of leading to a program. So even you've been watching the, his followers, even some politicians allied to President uh, Buhari, they've been making very careless uh, statements, but they government has not been holding them to uh, to account so he's worried so that is the point number three and number four violent uprising beginnings from one section of the country and spreading quickly to other areas and leading to the disembarkment of the country and yet the government is doing nothing so i don't know what will be your thought and response to that uh, doctor first of all it is true that the country is left to the hands of cartels and the bandits mm -hmm. gangs criminals. criminal gangs yes. obasanjo is correct mm -hmm. Obasanjo is one of the few men, democratic men in Africa who surrendered the power and went back and became a civilian and contested. He might not be good, 
me and Obasanjo, we disagree. But on this one, we have agreed. Obasanjo, Kofi Anani, and the rest of that ik, we don't agree. Every meeting that we go, where Obasanjo, Kofi, the late Kofi Annan, and some Africans, that Nana Kofi and Nana of, of, Niger, of Ghana, we disagree. Because I am plain, straight talking East African, Pan African. Most of these guys, Obasanjo and the rest, pocket money from the French intelligence systems to talk. You know Obasanjo is a, a life chairman of Alcatel. A life chairman of Alcatel in Africa. They work together to, to take money out of Africa. But my mind is a straightforward. Obasanjo has never convinced me since he let down Taylor. Obasanjo persuaded Taylor and the late Taylor to be taken by the ICC. I have never forgiven Dr. Obasanjo, General Obasanjo. Every meeting we meet, anywhere, we clash. And when he sees my hand, he has to go to the toilet, then come back. Because I tell him off. He's a very good editor, an African editor, but he has got very bad manners on money. On this letter, the first thing, the only thing, history has ignored him, is writing this letter. This letter, which I'm going to take very seriously, crossover. Nigerians, Biafrans, don't think I've given up. Look at this face. If I am killed on the way, look after this face. Remember me. I am not going to give up. I am going to seek and ask the British government why they are quiet. I am going to ask from another international aspect. In this week coming, why there is silence when people are being murdered. Yes, a conspiracy of silence. Silence, silence, silence. Look at the conditions that are in Nigeria. Can human beings live here? The oil is being taken every day. Look at the pillage. The ham people taking whatever they want. What type of life is this in Africa? How can Africa, how can Africa sit and watch? How can AU before you leave, the role of African Union. Mm -hmm. Because coming in next is an ambassador yes. at large who will tell us what is the African Union doing. Yes. This problem is all over. Chad, mm -hmm. it's all over Cameroon, mm -hmm. Burkina, uh, Burkina, this Faso. Burkina, Burkina Faso, yes. Niger, all the states yes. of the Sahara region. Spread, really. they, it has spread. Mm -hmm. I would like to know mm -hmm. what African Union is doing. Because the peace and security would take this report so that we avoid the Rwanda situation. Yes. Kenya is a member of the security and the peace, peace and the security of African Union. Yes. I would like you to question. You don't gag, you don't gag me. Mm -hmm. I will ask whether here or anywhere, I will gag you and bring chaos for you to answer to that public mm -hmm. why African Union peace and the security has not talked about the killings in Biafra. Yes. Why? Why we don't we see anything on on the agenda of African Union? Yes. And then we see Mr. Buhari wearing his gabs, walking tall high in in the Niger army. He controls a bandit army that is killing people on a daily basis, and he threatens people. Anybody who talks is a terrorist. Anybody, come. I'm not a terrorist. I'm talking as a human rights activist. It is me who stood with Osuji. Osuji, the judge. We stood together in London and campaigned for that Obasanjo to be released. When Obasanjo, Chief Abiola, and another gentleman who died, Kareo, the one in the in the, in the, in the Delta region, yes. he died in prison. He was sentenced. He was killed. Chief Abiola died. Abacha killed Chief Abiola. Sani Abacha, yes, the former president. That Obasanjo, I was standing on Nigerian High Commission every Friday. Myself, 
the judge Obas Osuji, the current judge, and Osuji, shame on you. You have ashamed me. You are now the presiding judge of the International Criminal Court, and you have allowed your own people to be killed. When we stood at that Nigerian Embassy, High Commission in London, every Friday in the cold winter, trying to make sure that Abacha releases these guys. Now you have gone, you have become a full judge, you have allowed the killings to take place and without any recommendation. Yes, and all the killings are taking place and the Nigerian government or the President Buhari purportedly is trying to contend with that matter of Boko Haram. He's also now created another controversy and that is the Ruga settlements and many have also slammed it as a further confirmation of President's alleged plan to Islamize the country and ever-present allegation directly dismissed by the federal government. So Can you imagine a state where Biafrans when they got no fee in the canoe, they are told to go back home. Where is their home? Their friends are told to go home. Hello? Is this Africa that we want? They are in Nigeria. It is like you going from here to Turkana and you are told to go back home. And yet you are in the same country. That is the situation in Nigeria today. That is what is happening on the ground. We have reports here of people doing it, tapes, videos. We don't speak without evidence. One thing I've shown, I will never speak without evidence. And my evidence is not Jichopev. Like the evidence that someone is manufacturing in offices and annex offices here, letters and uh, getting younger men to, to manufacture evidence. I don't. I speak with evidence, real, from the ground. Because I have a network. Mm -hmm. A good network in Africa that can help Africa. Not fictitious. Machiavellian and Nikolai Machiavelli op policies of grabbing everything. You grab everything. You want to grab people's hair. <laughs> Buhari and the rest of such people in Africa. Mm -hmm. You know they have killed our Africa. They have made our Africa not workable. The people of Biafra, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. The people of Amazonia, don't lose hope. The people of Central Africa, don't lose hope. There is a voice. There is a voice here. In me, there is a voice. I'll speak until we get rid of this impunity. I'll speak until we bring sanity in Nigeria. We shall speak until human rights abuses stop. We shall speak until AU hears us. We shall speak. After all, we spoke and AU heard us. My four investigative pieces were well done. Mm -hmm. I am not coached. I don't sit on a table and they send me questions. Yeah. No. You speak under Some, conviction. Yes, as it is. Yeah. Some people have been sent questions. Then they are pretending to be on TV. Rubbish. <laughs> I don't sit and get questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you can't take this name. It will be a battle. It could ignite things you don't know. All right, uh, no comment. Ke Aboyo saying, why was AU created in the first place to serve whose purpose exactly? They are seemingly deliberate silence on issues concerning the genocide going on in Biafraland and Amazonia's water maze me. And as Dr. said, he'll be joined by our guest today and I think they'll elaborate more on AU's failure even in curbing, uh, you know, the, the genocide that is going on right now in in in, uh, in, in Biafra and speaking about genocide uh, the second point uh, Mr. Uh, Bas Al there said uh, that um, this if not taken care of might lead to a Rwanda type of genocide and you know if we can recall history uh, the Rwanda type genocide really was ethnically you know instigated so is it this will, will, does this claim now go to legitimize the claim that has been uh, you know going around that actually it's Fulani against other tribes uh, in, in Nigeria because if he's referring to the Rwandan genocide, that was ethnicity. It too. is one tribe killing the other. It, it is Obasanjo has come out because he, he wants to wash his hands off. 
He wants to watch his van. Is he Obasan who brought Mr. Buhari? Then you see the Ruga, set, the, the, the Ruga settlements. Yes. <laughs> The, 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 the type of Ruga settlement is, is the type of how people here chase others from their areas. And take over by force. Uh, by force. Mm -hmm. How do you see your house where you used to bring your four children? Someone is still taking. There is, there is a, what? What is all this? And the people are just bumping around these countries. That's what Obuhari is doing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He wants to forcefully settle people, eliminate the one tribe, take away the ethnic group of the Biafrans, send them, kill them, then take over their land. Mm -hmm. The same policy is happening in some countries in Africa. Yes, there's one country where people are being told to leave. Yes. Then people come to take over their land even here it has happened i mean to be honest yes the people who lost who fle fled away from their homes during the post-election violence in 2007 they've never been able to go back to their land so that we speak true. because we have we have seen these conflicts we have seen them work elsewhere we have seen them destroy countries Terribly. i speak from a background of my own country uganda where things were so bad destroyed everything went down most of us here are still where we are look at us because of that conflict mm. therefore if you don't speak then it means you have not spoken martin Luther said if you hear something if you sit and you don't say something yeah. it means you have you are as much as guilty you're an accomplice yes an accomplice you must speak out there is nobody who should gag people not speak about mm -hmm. These guys in Biafra were seeking one good thing. What were they seeking? A referendum. Yes, they want to. Use you can stagger the results of the referendum. Tell them we shall give you independence in 2020 32. <laughs> they will agree and keep quiet. But you have refused them a the referendum. They've been patient long enough. Yes, you have refused them a referendum completely. Then you don't want them to vote. Nigeria went to elections. 84 million people registered voters. Only 28 voted. Is that a government? Is that a government? All right, doctor. I do not want us to exhaust everything now. So may I, I beg to leave so that our guests can come and continue with this conversation? Thank you very much, Miriam. Our if, viewers. If you have, you can read. There are many let millions, me, just, millions and millions of people just few, worldwide. Just and I want to thank them mm -hmm. that more is coming. We have the next guest, mm -hmm. Ambassador.